Oh, hey, it's me, Jeff, from Hot Tub Owner HQ. I was just taking advantage of the drizzly day to do a little electrical work uh, right here in and around my hot tub. That's probably okay, right? <laughs> Actually, no, it's not. And my humor aside, or lack thereof, we're here today to talk about something kind of dry, which is why I wanted to start this video with something slightly humorous, at least in my head. And today we're talking about something called a GFCI breaker and whether you need one for your hot tub. So stay tuned, we're getting right into it today and I promise it's not gonna be super boring. GFCI stands for Ground Fault Interrupter and it's basically a kind of breaker that trips in 1 40th of a second anytime there's any sort of electrical disruption. So if I were dumb enough to have an actual live power strip and electrical cords dangling right near my hot tub water and were to accidentally drop that into the hot tub, that breaker would trip in about 1 40th of a second. Enough time to save your life and mine, even though that's not a very smart thing to do. And this actually isn't plugged in. So if you already own a hot tub, how do you know if you already have a GFCI breaker? If you're about to get one, how do you get one? And is that expensive? We're diving deep into all of those questions and more in this video. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff Campbell and this is my channel, Hot Tub Owner HQ. I also have a website called hottubownerhq.com and I get into all kinds of tips that I've learned over the years in owning four different hot tubs. We're gonna talk about repair and maintenance. We're gonna talk about chemicals. We're talking about fixing leaks. We're gonna talk about all the common questions that come up when you or I have a problem and we don't know what to do. I'm not a hot tub salesman. I'm not trying to sell you a hot tub. I've just learned a lot along the way and I wanna share my tips with you. So that's what this channel is about. I hope you give me a thumbs up, hit that subscription button, and the bell notification so that you get notified of future videos like this one. If you have a comment, I'd love to see that down below. And go ahead and let me know of any ideas you have for what you'd like to see in future videos. So right out of the gate, just know that if you have a hot tub that does not plug into a standard wall outlet, then you have likely what is called a 220 volt hot tub. In other words, it's hardwired into your house's electrical system. In most cases, it's gonna be wired directly to a disconnect box within five feet of the hot tub. Inside of that box, there should be a GFCI breaker. Then that box will run all the way to your outside electrical panel for your house. If, however, you have a hot tub that just plugs into a standard wall outlet, that's called a plug and play hot tub, you need to have that hot tub plugged into a wall socket that is a GFCI breaker. What do those look like? Well, let me show you. So I mentioned disconnect box. That's a box located within five feet of your hot tub that contains the breaker for your hot tub directly. Then in turn, that disconnect box connects to your main house's electrical panel. This is my uh, disconnect box. I'm gonna open it up so you can see inside. Let's look down below here. And you see right there, that little button right there tells you that this is a GFCI breaker. And if it were to pop, because I was dumb enough to do what I was showing you earlier with the uh, power strip, then I would have to reset it by, the breakers would pop all the way off and I'd have to push them all the way back on. I can test to see if it's working by hitting that test button right there. I've also mentioned plug and play hot tubs, the kind that just plug into a normal wall socket. This is obviously gonna be a wall socket on the outside of your house, unless you're putting your hot tub inside. This is the wall socket on the outside of my house. I don't have a hot tub connected to it, but as you can see, it is actually a GFCI breaker, which is great since it gets uh, technically exposed to the weather. It's under an overhang, but rain could still hit it. And you see that little button right there in the center, that's the actual breaker button. So if it gets super wet, if, if there's torrential rain and it gets drenched and water gets into that socket, that button will actually trigger as you can see here, this one was originally designed to have a plastic cover over it to protect it from the elements. That was not here when we bought this house, and I've never bothered to put one on, but I should. But that little breaker right there tells you that this is a GFCI wall socket, and that's what you definitely need to use if you're connecting your plug-and-play hot tub to an outside wall socket. 
I've talked about GFCI breakers. I've shown you what they looked like. Let me tell you a quick story though. At my last home, before I owned this hot tub, I wanted a hot tub, but we didn't have one. We, didn't also, we also didn't have a lot of money. So I found a used one on Craigslist. I paid more to move it to the house than it cost me to buy. I only paid 150 for it. Got it to the house, thought, okay, great. Now we'll just run an electrical line to the breaker panel. No big deal. It'll be up and running. Well, I was dead wrong. First of all, there was no, geo, uh, there was no disconnect box anywhere near where I put the hot tub. So we had to wire one of those in. Then, I, as I mentioned earlier, that disconnect box has to wire to your electrical panel on the outside of your house, ideally the closest one. Some houses have more than one. The problem was I didn't have enough open spaces in that panel to connect the disconnect box to. So we had to really go above and beyond in trying to figure out how to do that. I talked to three different electrical companies, one of which wanted to charge me $3,000 to do it. In the end, I found a great company who did it for $700, but I still spent way more money doing that than I needed to and more than I wanted to and more than I budgeted for, more importantly. So if you're about to get a hot tub, you need to take a look at your, that, the breaker panel on the outside of your house. We're going to take a look at mine in just a second, but you need to make sure there's at least one big open space in your panel. If every available spot is filled up with a breaker that's controlling something else, just know you're going to have to swap out that breaker panel for a larger one or do some jury rigging like the electricians that I hired did. It's an important thing to know because it could cost you a lot of money. And if you're going to do that, you at least want to know about it ahead of time. Okay, so I mentioned the electrical panel for your house, the main one. I actually don't have one on the outside of this house. I did at my last house where I ran into my electrical issues. This is my main breaker panel for my house. And as you can see here, I already have a hot tub and those breakers are right there where it says spa. If I was adding one to this panel, you can see down here I only have one slot left, one open slot. That could be a problem because you see how big this breaker is for the hot tub. It's a double 50 amp breaker. So again, if you're about to add a hot tub, it's a great idea to take a look at your breaker panel and make sure you have the space. And that's everything that I know about GFCI breakers, disconnect boxes, and how the hot tub electrical system works. I am not an electrician. I'm a hot tub owner and lover. I'm telling you what I've learned along the way, but if you need electrical advice, you should talk to a qualified electrical professional in your area. Once again, my name is Jeff Campbell. This is my channel, Hot Tub Owner HQ. I also have my website, hottubownerhq.com. And here and there, I share all the best tips that I've learned along the way in owning four different hot tubs about maintaining, balancing the chemicals, repairing, fixing leaks, you name it. If I've dealt with it, I'm going to share my tips for you so that hopefully you don't have to go through all of the same headaches that I've gone through. I would love it if you joined me on this journey along the way. Hit that subscribe button. Click the bell notification so you get notified of future videos like this one. If you like this video, leave me a comment down below. If you're not crazy about this video, I want to hear from you too. Just be nice. It's that simple. Anyway, thanks for being here.